Be good? My name is Jeff Petriello, and my tech talk tonight is about Docker. Contain your excitement. You'll get that later. Right. So um, Docker is like this thing that you might have seen in some documentation. You might have heard about it. Honestly, when you look at what Docker says it is on its website, uh, which is an integrated technology suite that enables development and IT operations teams to build, ship, and run distributed applications anywhere, it sounds incredibly vague and overpowered. So I think it's OK. <laughs> like I approached Docker, and I was like, what does this actually do even after reading this? I have no idea. So I want to break it down to its fundamentals for you today, even though please understand that there is so much more to it than what I could possibly cover in 10 minutes. So no, really, though, like what is Docker? So at a high level, Docker is a Linux utility that can efficiently create, ship, and run containers. Uh, so what is a container? Um, a container is a self-contained execution environment. It shares the kernel of its host's operating system, but it has its own isolated CPU, it has its own memory, block IO, network resources. Uh, it's basically like a, a mini machine that you're creating. Um, you may have actually heard of a similar type of technology that sort of swept through before containers became popular, which are actually called virtual machines. Uh, virtual machines, uh, the main difference that you want to understand between a virtual machine and a container is that a virtual machine includes an operating system and a container does not, which means a container is much, much more lightweight than a virtual machine. So that's one of the main reasons that people use containers uh, is for that efficiency. So obviously you can imagine that means uh, you know, a size difference between like megabytes and gigabytes here that we're talking about. Um, another main uh, chief reason that people use containers is for their portability. So what containers allow you to do is essentially develop an application in one environment and ensure that it will work in almost any other environment that can run Docker. So you're controlling your environment variables, you're controlling libraries, you're controlling the versions of those that you're using, uh, all within your application so that you can make sure it works uh, anywhere that you want it to. So this really speeds up development process uh, in terms of testing and deployment specifically. So, uh, that's an amazing feature that is definitely central to why Docker has like swept through uh, developer land in popularity. The downside, one of the main ones that you'll hear is security. So because uh, at its fundamental you know, level, um, the Docker container is still utilizing its uh, host operating system, you open yourself up to certain vulnerabilities that a virtual machine would not be um, subjected to. Docker has done a lot of work to sort of minimize this vulnerability, so it's pretty, uh, you know, I, 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 I didn't see that sort of complaint pop up a lot in my research, but it's definitely something you want to be aware of uh, if you really wanted to isolate something truly, you know, a virtual machine might be a way uh, that you could do that, especially if your application doesn't need to scale uh, at a you know at a large level. Okay, so is Docker just a way to use containers? Not really. It is definitely definitely does do that, but it also does a ton of other stuff. So there are some fundamental differences between a Docker container and what the original concept of a container was. So it's just to give you a little bit of history, uh, containers are a Linux technology. Uh, and they basically utilize two Linux properties. One's called C groups and one's called um, namespaces. And these are the tools that Linux uses to isolate a, pro a group of processes or a process from uh, the, the rest of your um, operating system. So the way that it does that is with namespaces, it's going to actually take uh, 
uh, a group of resources and say to a single process, um, the, these group of resources is fully dedicated to you, even though it's a lie. And then C groups are going to take a whole bunch of processes and say, these are the resources you're allowed to use. So it sort of attacks it from both ends there. Um, and that's really what creates that isolation. Now, Dockers are single process. So what that means is like they're only being, you know, they're only allowing you to output that one process. So when you see Docker container, um, the applications that utilize Docker containers, oftentimes you're going to see like a ton of containers because each one of them is only dedicated to one process. And if you need multiple processes, you have multiple containers. So that's, you know, that's a definite difference between um, Docker as a container technology and like Linux containers or LXC, uh, which you might run into out there as well. Um, and they're also stateless. So another really important thing about a Docker container is it can't hold any um, permanent data. So when you want to access data, you need to do that um, outside of the, of the Docker container. So that's, uh, you know, there's a, some pretty simple ways to do that, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, Docker is also not the only thing that can handle containers for you. Linux containers, which I briefly talked about, um, or there's uh, ones that are concentrated on not being as heavy as Docker, like not have as many features, so you can simplify it. One of those is RKT, which you might want to check out. Uh, also, Docker does other things besides uh, help you manage and build containers. It hosts a ton of Docker images, much like you, it has this thing called Docker Hub, which is much like NPM. It's a giant registry of like Docker container applications, the uh, uh, images that you can uh, install on your own machine or your own uh, containers. Um, and also you can base new ones off of them as well. Um, it does a million other things. These are some of its products. It's, it's crazy. Um, I could go over them a little bit, but I'm sort of running out of time here. But pull, put simply, developers love Docker because it allows for the safe deployment of applications in unknown environments while working efficiently to share resources and allow for easier scalability. And it has a cute whale mascot. Um, how do devs actually use Docker? So one of the main um, ways that developers use Docker is with continuous integ integration and deployment, which we have talked about briefly, but not really in depth. So you can see this is like a general flow chart um, from docker.com of how that works. You push a, a repo to GitHub. GitHub uh, triggers a tool called Jenkins. And Jenkins copies the GitHub repo, including the Docker file, which helps you build your Docker image. And it builds that image automatically. It instantiates it. It runs its test automatically. And it will even push it to the Docker trusted registry if you have it in there as well. So it's sort of like this way to fully automate um, that process. Uh, in terms of deployment that a lot of people use. Um, it also, you know, this infrastructure optimization. So the idea that this is a less resource heavy technology than virtual machines is a huge advantage. So a company like Swisscom, I think they had originally, their technology used 400 virtual machines. And once they uh, incorporated Docker, they dropped that down to 20, which saves them a lot of money. So that's a huge advantage as, w as well. Uh, and it also allows for flexibility. So the, w the reason I got into Docker in the first place is because we were looking at the Code Wars documentation. Uh, and the way Code Wars uses Docker is really interesting. They switched over from using an application level code evaluator to a Docker container evaluation system in 2014, which allowed them uh, and its users full access to language runtimes that it wasn't able to do. So it really opened up Code Wars to be able to use a wider variety of technologies within an unknown environment. How can you use Docker? Sl slipped in a cat there. Um, so some stuff to try is install Docker from Mac, uh, for Mac from docker.com. Make sure you don't in accidentally install NPM uh, Docker, which I did and took me like an hour to figure out why nothing was working. It is a completely different technology that has absolutely nothing to do with Docker. Um, 
So you're going to get one of those cute little um, whales in your menu bar. Uh, it's a lot like Postgres, actually. You can just make sure it's running, basically. You just want to check that it's running. Once it's running, you can open up any command line tool uh, and start running Docker, uh, Docker uh, commands. So this is a really simple one that um, we could just go over briefly. Docker run Ubuntu bin echo hello world. This will, you know, it, you can get a Docker container up and running in like a minute. <laughs> so the way this works is Docker is your Docker command. Run is the actual, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, the command for Docker that you're running. Ubuntu, this is your image. So this is the image that it's going to look for on your machine. If that image does not already exist on your machine, it will go to Docker Hub, like kind of like NPM, and it'll install that image. And then every other time you need it, it it'll be really fast, which is great. Um, and then bin echo hello world is the actual command that you want to run within that image. So as you can imagine, this logs out hello world. But it does it in its own container, which is super cool. You've never done that before. Um, so that's really simple. Some other things you might want to try is installing uh, Kitematic. I don't know if that's how you say it. It's basically Postico for Docker. It lets, it's like a GUI way to look at all of the containers that you have. It's really easy to do that with like Docker, uh, Docker PS in the command line, but this looks a lot nicer. Uh, you definitely want to explore the Docker Hub to see what type of images are out there. You want to learn what a Docker file looks like and try to build one yourself, which is not as hard as it sounds. It's basically how you build a Docker image. Um, and it, it's, it's really interesting. And, and how it actually implements that image is very cool as well in the command line. And then in, in general, how does uh, it work with uh, deployment and integration, which is something that I still have not figured out. I guess we don't have time for questions, but thank you.